G'day guys, how are you going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and I'm your instructor from Deep Cool. And today we're gonna to be taking you through a start to finish guide on the Castle 360 EX range of CPU coolers. This is going to be covering all of the hardware, how to mount it to Intel and AMD, and also covering on how to control the fans, the pump, and also all of the different lighting methods for this CPU cooler. So if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section down below, get subscribed and let's begin. Now we're gonna go through all the different parts that come with the Castle 360 EX CPU cooler. And just a reminder, the one that we're looking at is the white edition. Now we have a 360 millimeter radiator which can fit three 120 millimeter fans. The fans come included. And then we have the CPU cooler here with the pump in combo. So we've got thermal paste already pre-applied. And we've got two wires coming out. One is for the PWM connection that lets us control the pump speed. And then we've also got one which is for controlling the RGB element elements of the pump. Now what we have here is the three 120 millimeter fans, which are the white and black version that come included with a PWM fan connection for each one so you can control the fan speed through the motherboard, which I'll show you later on in the video. Depending on your model though, you may also have an RGB connection, so just take that into consideration. So for controlling the RGB element of the pump, you've got the controller here that comes included with a three pin five volt connection at one end and then a SATA power five volt connection for your power supply. Then for controlling the fans and the fan speeds, you've got this three in one fan controller cable, which will let you control the fan speed through the PWM setting in your motherboard software. Then the last cable we have here is the RGB connector that connects from the motherboard to either the RGB element on your pump or your fans that come included. Now this little tiny bag of black screws is for mounting the fans to your radiator and then mounting the radiator to your case. 
Now this back plate here goes on the back side of your motherboard and there is actually a little laser etch on the front that tells you which side it's for. So you can use this for either AMD or if you flip it around you can use it for Intel. So just refer back to the manual to know which way to put it. So the bag that you have here labeled Intel and AMD has all the screws needed so you can secure your CPU pump to the CPU brackets for your particular uh, motherboard. Now this bag here that's labeled AMD has the brackets and screws for mounting to an AMD socket. This little bag here that's labeled Intel 2000XX is for mounting to a socket 2000 series and above. And then this little bag that's labeled Intel has the brackets needed for mounting to an Intel socket. And now this little bag that's labeled TR4 is for mounting to an AMD Threadripper socket. So now let's talk about how to mount to a Intel socket with the CPU cooler. So the first step is you'll get your back plate here that has either Intel on one side or AMD on the other. And you need to make sure for Intel that the AMD side in this step is facing towards you. Then with the long black screw that comes in the Intel and AMD bag, you'll push that through the hole on the long arm and you'll do that four times so every hole has a screw through it. Then with these little clips here, you'll push that over the screw. Let me just do this on camera. Push it over the screw head and onto the arm and the purpose of doing this is to secure the screw and to stop it from spinning when you're tightening from the other side. So let me go ahead and actually put through the four screws and cover it so you can see how that looks. So now what we should have here is something that looks like what I've got in my hand, which is a screw through each outside corner and then a screw cover to stop the screw from moving when we go to tighten it. So now for the next part, we actually need to get the Intel bracket mounted to the CPU pump. And what we need to do is also get this short silver screw that comes in the Intel and AMD bag. What we'll do then is grab the screw and actually put it through the inside hole here, which is countersunk. So that way when you put the screw through on each corner, that it's completely flush. And you'll do that four times. So you have two screws for one bracket and two screws for the other bracket. So now that you've got your back plate and pump prepared and ready for install, we're about to go to the next step now, which is actually how to mount it to the motherboard. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to mount it to an AM4 socket. However, the process is very, very similar for Intel users. So you guys stay tuned. So now we're at the point where I'm going to show you how to mount and install for a AMD type socket on an AMD motherboard. So first step is with your back plate here, you need to have it with the AMD text on the back plate facing away from you. And then get the long black screws that come in the AMD and Intel bag and push that through the little hole on the short side or the short arm on the back plate. Once you've done that four times for each corner, you'll need to get these little black covers which will actually go over the, uh, I guess, screw. And the reason that you put these on is to actually stop the actual screw from uh, spinning or moving when you're tightening from the other side. So we need to remove the plastic cover from the CPU cooler pump combo. We need to get the brackets that come in the AMD bag and these will mount to the outside with the hoses facing down. So these will mount to the outside as so, so you have one on each side and then with these brackets they have a countersunken screw hole which will be the side that is facing up towards you. So give me a second while I go ahead and get this mounted. So now what you should have is what I've got in my hand, which is the pump with the bracket on each side with the four screws inserted. So we're now ready to go ahead and mount it to the motherboard. So now with the AM4 back plate against the back of the motherboard, we're now ready to use these AM4 standoffs that come in the AM4 packet of your CPU cooler. We're going to get the thick threaded side. We're actually just gonna go ahead and screw that into the thread hole on the back plate. And we're going to do that four times. Okay, so now we've got the CPU cooler pump combo. We've got the brackets already installed and so we're going to grab these small little silver screws here and these are actually going to secure the CPU pump and cooler against the back plate on the motherboard. So we wanna make sure that we're doing opposite corners at each time. So we'll go ahead and put the first screw on. And these only need to be finger tight because we're going to then tighten them with a Phillips head screwdriver at the very end. So we've got one there, grab the second one. Yeah. So we've got now 
the opposite corners down, we'll do the other sides. What you can do as well is if you've got a magnetic tip screwdriver, you can actually go ahead and line it up with the magnetic tip screwdriver and you can tighten it that way as well, which is a little bit simpler and maybe a little bit easier for some of you as well. You don't want to over tighten the actual screws, you just want to make sure that they're basically as far as they're going to, going to go without stripping the screw head. Also we'll just do each corner and this is to make sure that we've got equal pressure on all four sides so the CPU is going to make really good contact with the CPU cooler. So now that we've got the CPU cooler and pump combo installed and correctly mounted, we can now go to the next step, which is connecting the right cables to control the fan speed, the pump speed, as well as the RGB. So now we're at the point where we're about to cable up and connect everything. So with your pump, you should find that coming out of the pump will be a four pin female connector. This is called a PWM connector. And then you'll have one for each of your fans. So you should have, I guess, four in total. With the CPU pump, what we need to do is actually find the CPU pump all in one connector, or sorry, PWM connector on your motherboard. So you just refer back to your manufacturer's motherboard for the location. For me, it's actually labeled on my ASUS motherboard and it's down on the left hand side of the board. So we'll just grab the connector and we'll push that in. And then with your fans, you can actually use the three in one PWM fan connector that comes included with the cooler. So for each fan, it's male to female. So we'll just go ahead and push each of those in. They only really go in one way. So we'll go ahead and just plug in one, two, and then three. And then with the end of that cable, we have here a four pin female. And we can just plug that into the header uh, fan header of your motherboard again, which should be labeled on the board or in the manual. So for me, it's up towards the top of the board here. So we'll just line it up, push that in. And now what we can do is we can control the three fan speeds using the software on the motherboard and also the, uh, the pump speed um, through the software on the motherboard as well. So now we've got one last cable, which is the cable for the RGB. So on this particular pump, we have a three pin five volt connector coming out, which is a female connector. And then included in the box here, you've either got a um, all-in-one RGB splitter cable, or you can use the SATA controller for manually controlling the effects and the different lighting methods for the pump. So for this particular part, we're going to go ahead and connect the three pin female to the three pin male that comes on the splitter cable. And then at the other end here, you'll have a three pin female that says either Gigabyte or ASUS ASRock MSI, depending on your manufacturer's motherboard. So for me, because I'm using ASUS, I'm going to get this connector, locate the RGB header on the motherboard. So for me, it's up on the top right. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in the correct way. So for me, it's two at the bottom and one at the top. And the reason why we do this the right way is to not short circuit anything. And it's going to allow us to now control the effects and the colors on the pump through software. If you want to, and your fuel mother doesn't, motherboard doesn't support it, you can go ahead and use the connector that goes to your power supply, and you can use the buttons here on the controller to independently control the colors and uh, I guess cycle the different effects that way. So we'll just go ahead and disconnect what we've just done. We'll go ahead and get the three pin male of the SATA controller um, connector in, and we'll plug that in. And then what we'll do is we'll get the SATA power connector in, and then that will go through the back side here and plug into the power supply and then we can use that controller to control the effects. So when you turn on your computer for the first time you just need to press the delete key on your keyboard. This is to enter the motherboard's BIOS and this is where you can control the CPU pump speed and also the fan speed for your uh, fans on your radiator. So once you're in the motherboard BIOS, for me I'm using an ASUS motherboard so if you come in you can basically see down the bottom here, we've got an advanced mode. We've got the different fans that are um, showing the RPM. We'll go ahead and press F7 though. 
and then we'll go to the area where it says monitor up in the top here and we'll go down to where it says QFAN configuration. So now let's go into Windows so I can show you how to control the RGB lighting. So now we're in Windows and we've got the uh, ASUS Aura Sync software loaded. We've got it installed and this lets us control the RGB lighting of our fans, the pump and also anything else that's compatible with Aura Sync, such as my RAM that I've got in here too. So if we set it to a static color like red or blue and then press apply, the whole system changes to that color. And now if you just want to control the RGB elements, for example the pump, just using the controller you can do that by connecting the SATA power connector to your power supply and then the RGB header from the pump to the RGB connector from the controller. And then using the controller you can just press the plus and minus to cycle through the different modes and then you can hold down the center button to turn it off and then you can hold down the center button again to turn it back on. So something that is actually really cool was the fact that Deep Cool put their GamerStorm logo on the underside of the pump and if you want to you can actually remove this cover, pull out that logo and with the one that they've included in the box you can put on your own design and actually put that there instead. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. On your CPU pump cover you need to uh, rotate that sorry, anti-clockwise and then pull that off. Pull out the GamerStorm logo and then with your blank version that you've been given with the design that you've put on with the little tabs here on the back, just need to line that up and until it clicks in. Once it's clicked in, you know that you've got it securely mounted. Grab the pump cover, put that back on and rotate it clockwise until it clicks. And then you've got your awesome design on your CPU cord, which is completely different to everyone else's. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Now you know how to mount the Castle 360 range of CPU cores to either Intel or AMD. You know how to control the lights, the fans, and the pumps. And if you have any feedback or suggestions for future videos, leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll see you again soon.
So if you're new to the world of RGB lighting and PC building and you're not quite sure which wire goes where, then you're in the right place. Hi, my name is Sean and I'm your instructor from Deepcool. And I'll be taking you through this guide on how to identify, connect and synchronize all of the RGB lighting that comes included with the Matrix 55 at RGB 3F case. Now, before we begin, I just wanted to quickly say that if you have any comments or questions about this video, about this product, or about any of the other Deepcool products on the Deepcool website, then make sure you leave those comments or questions down below. And the reason why is it's going to help us improve the quality of these video tutorials, which are ultimately for you guys, and it's also going to give us an indicator about things that you want to see next. So let's first of all identify which Deepcool Matrix 55 case that you actually own as that will actually determine a little bit how this tutorial goes. So if you have the Deepcool Matrix 55 standalone version, you won't have a power supply basement like what we've got here and you only have a single RGB element at the front and that will actually be connected by a 4 pin 12 volt connector which we'll talk about a little bit further on. If you have the Deepcool Matrix 55 at RGB, you will have the PSU basement, you'll have a single RGB element at the front, and that will be actually a uh, 5 volt 3 pin connector. Then if you have the Deepcool Matrix 55 at RGB 3F, the 3F stands for 3 fans. So you've got the PSU basement, you've got the RGB element at the front, plus 3 RGB fans pre-installed, and all of those are a 3 pin 5 volt connector. Now when you open up your case, you're going to notice that there's going to be a lot of different cables and they all do different things. So we're just going to quickly take a step back and look at each cable and what they do, I guess, independently and how to identify each one. The first cable we're going to be talking about is the Molex cable. This is the slightly larger two pin cable that is going to be for those of you who want to control the RGB lighting using the LED button on the top of the case. The next cable we're going to be talking about is the 5 volt 3 pin connector. This is for the RGB lighting. This is for those of you who have the Matrix 55 at RGB or Matrix 55 at RGB 3F um, cases. So that's going to be for if you want to synchronize all of your case fans and your lighting all together with all of the different effects. So it's the 3 pin 5 volt connector. If you have the um, standard Matrix 55 case, you're going to be using a four pin 12 volt connector. So in the industry, there's two types, five volt three pin or four pin 12 volt. So they're slightly different and that's how you can identify the differences is one will have three pins and one will have four. So now that you've got your computer assembled, you've got all the cables ran and cable tied and the last part left is the RGB component. This is the part that I'm gonna help you with. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to find the cable that comes included with the case that's labeled main. Now this is going to be the instruction for if you want to go ahead and control the RGB lighting with the LED button at the top of the case. So that way you're not having to pull the covers off and muck around with um, different configurations. So with this main end, we're gonna go ahead and find the cable on the case which is going to be the three pin mail. And these two are going to connect together. That three pin mail connector is the one coming from the LED button. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna find the remaining three pin five volt cables. And we're going to simply go ahead and on that main extension lead, we're just going to go ahead and plug them in one at a time and go down the little chain, if you wanna call that the extension cable. And this will basically create all the RGB lighting to be synchronized. So that way when you're picking your effects, all the effects are gonna happen um, on each, I guess, fan and also the RGB strip. Then lastly, we're gonna grab your Molex connector from your power supply. And we're gonna find the two pin Molex coming from the case. And we're gonna plug these in together. So this will actually give you power and give you lighting now. So now that we've got those all plugged in, we'll cable tie those later. We'll spin the case around so you can see what's going on. If we go ahead and press the LED button, we'll go ahead and cycle through the different color modes. So it's really, really simple. I think the part that I guess some people do maybe make the mistake on is that first part, which is the main connector going into the three pin female. So if you've got now more than one RGB component and it's from the deep cool range, 
like you might be like me and you might have the deep cool all-in-one CPU coolers which have their own RGB elements and you want to synchronize those components with the case fans and the RGB strip I'm going to show you how to do that as well so with the CPU cooler I'm using the Castle 240 RGB which comes with this little remote here so you can actually get more control over the lighting and the effects what we're going to do is we're going to grab that main connector cable, the extension cable. We're gonna plug that into the RGB, I guess, um, hub, if you wanna call it that. We're just gonna go ahead and simply plug it into any of the three pin male connectors that are on the hub. So we'll push that in. And then what we'll do is we'll find from the hub, there's a cable coming out of the top, which is a three pin female. And then this will actually go into the three pin male of the controller. So we'll plug those in. So now we've got, I guess, a complete circuit, a complete loop. What we're going to do is go ahead and give it some power. We're gonna grab the SATA end of the controller, plug that into the SATA end of the power supply. So we'll push those together. They only go together one way. And if I spin this around, you guys should hopefully see that there is RGB lighting on the front of the case. And there is also RGB lighting to the interior as well. And that they are all in sync. And if we reach behind and grab the controller, if I can do that for you guys, you'll see that if we use the controller and we press up or press down, that the actual controller um, will change the patterns. You can actually go ahead and reverse them if you like or actually speed them up and speed them down. So that's if you wanna go ahead and use the controller which comes with something like the all-in-one CPU cooler. So lastly, with the troubleshooting element of this, there's really one rule and that is that you don't run both in combination with each other. And what I mean by that is if you're gonna to choose to control the RGB lighting with the button on the top using the Molex connector, then you stick with just the Molex connector and you do not go ahead and connect, where are we, with the SATA power as well. If I was to go ahead and plug both of these in together and try and you know give it more power than it needs, I risk damaging the components, shorting out my RGB lighting and risk damaging other components inside the computer. So it's really important that you simply choose one or the other. And then with the um, RGB cable being the main end, making sure that it's always pushed all the way in to either the connector for the button on the case or to the controller that comes with your CPU cooler. Alrighty guys, so if you've made it this far, hopefully you've now got a computer that resembles maybe something like what I've got going on behind me here. If you like this video, chuck it a like, get subscribed, turn on the bell so that way you know when other video tutorials will be published and I'll see you guys in the next video. G'day guys, my name is Sean from Deep Cool and today I'm going to be taking you through a guide on how to control and synchronize the lighting with the Matrix 70 at RGB 3F case, which also applies to the base model, the Matrix 70. A lot of you have been asking how to control the lighting and so today we're gonna to talk about three different ways that you can do that. So we're gonna be talking about how to control the lighting with the motherboard, also how to control the lighting using the button on the top of the case, and also how to control it using the little controller, which comes included on the Deep Cool CPU cooler. So if you have any questions about this particular video, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll put a little link in the description as well and make sure you click the subscribe button guys so you don't miss out on any other future videos. So let's get stuck into this tutorial and let's begin. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do for synchronizing the lighting with the motherboard is we need to make sure that the motherboard has the correct connector. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the three pin five volt connector and connecting that to the three pin five volt header on the motherboard. The position of the connector can vary from motherboard to motherboard. At the moment, the one that you're looking at is from ASUS, um, but you'll need to check the, I guess, manual specifications for your particular brand. Once we've identified the connector, what we need to do is we need to connect the three pin five volt connector cable that comes from our RGB components to the motherboard. So now one thing that we've already gone ahead and done is actually connected all of the RGB components to the RGB splitter or to the RGB hub. And then what we have is essentially one cable, which is one output 
from the RGB components which connects to the three pin header on the motherboard. If you want to know more about how to go ahead and connect all of the RGB components, you can check out our tutorial on the Matrix 55 at RGB 3F as the, I guess, configuration is exactly the same. So now that you've got your three pin five volt connector connected to the motherboard and the system is powered up, you can launch your, I guess, RGB software. So we're going to be using the AuraSync RGB software and you should now be able to control the lighting of your case and all the fans and all the different elements using that software. So if we change the color, for example, we'll change it to red. So we've selected red in the software. We now press apply and all the fans and all the different accessories, all the RGB elements are now red and that will apply no matter what color you pick and if you wanna choose something different than just a static color, than one of the effects, then you just go ahead and select the effect. So as long as the three pin five volt connector is connected to the three pin five volt header on your motherboard and all of the RGB connectors are connected at the back of the case, you shouldn't have any issue and this should be the final outcome. So now we're going to move on to part two of this tutorial, which I guess is going to be how to control the lighting of your RGB using the button on the top of your case. So with the Matrix 70 at RGB 3F, when you take the back cover off, you'll see a little, I guess, control panel here, and you'll have one single cable coming off the bottom of that control panel, which has a three pin male connector. And this will go ahead and plug into the three pin female connector that has a tag on it which says main. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug both of those in and then we need to find this SATA cable with a yellow tag on it which talks about unplugging the connector from the motherboard to make sure that you're not running both. And we're going to plug this SATA connection into one of the SATA power connections from our power supply. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug that in. It only goes in one way. And once you've done that and we spin the case back around, what you should hopefully be seeing about there, about there in the frame in um, on your screen is all of the RGB lighting. And if we press the button, which is I guess at the back um, row of buttons on the case on the top, we press that button, we'll be cycling through the different color modes for this particular case. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just making sure that you've got your SATA power connected to the lead with the yellow tag on the back of the case, which is labeled like so. And then you've got this little connector here from the control panel plugging into the cable labeled main. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to part three, which is how to control the lighting using the RGB controller, which comes with, I think I have it in my pocket here, um, the CPU cooler. So this is the controller that comes with your CPU cooler, specifically the deep cool CPU coolers, and we can control using the buttons if we wish. Okay, so now for part three, we're going to be configuring the RGB lighting with the controller, uh, which comes with the DP, uh, ugh, sorry, oh my God, why do I keep saying the, the DP. DP with your deep cool CPU cooler to control all the RGB elements of your case and all the fans and different RGB elements. So with your controller, you should have at one end some three pin male connectors and then at the other end, a SATA power connector. So what we'll do first is we'll grab the SATA power connector end and we'll find a spare SATA power connection on your power supply and we'll plug both of those in. And then at the other end, we'll grab one of the three pin male connectors and we'll need to find that cable that says main on your case and go ahead and that should be a three pin, uh, sorry, three pin female. So we'll go ahead and plug those in together. So now what we should have if I spin this around is everything looking nice and purple. So you've got three fans at the front that are purple. And if I keep spinning it, I don't know if this cable will reach, it probably won't. Um, but we've got now some purple RGB elements going on, on the inside as well. And then with that controller, you can just cycle through the different color modes depending on you know what your particular taste is. So 
that's it for how to control the lighting on uh, the controller side of things. If you want to go back and watch the other sections on how to control using the motherboard um, or using the button on the top of the case, we'll put little timestamps down in the description as well so you can skip backwards and forwards to those parts as well. Alrighty guys, so there we have it. Three different ways that you can control the lighting from your case with your motherboard or with the button on top or with the little controller from the CPU cooler. If you have any thoughts or questions about this particular video or maybe even a suggestion on something that we should cover next, leave it in the comment section down below. Get subscribed, turn on the bell so you don't miss out on when we put out new tutorials and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.